glory in Jesus. Hope everyone had a blessed weekend. Thank you to everyone worshiping with us in the sanctuary and on Facebook Live. I thank you there, God, for each and every one who wake up, roll out of bed. Hallelujah, Jesus, and tune in to us this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Today we'll be taking our scriptures from Isaiah 58, 1 through 11. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isaiah 58, 1 through 11. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Isaiah 58, 1 to 11, and it reads, Cry aloud, spear not, lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. They have, we have fasted, they say, and we have not seen. We have afflicted our souls and you take no notice. In fact, in the day of our fast, you find pleasure and exploit all your labors. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. It is a fast that I have chosen a day for a man to afflict his soul. It is to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes. Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day of the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free? and that you break every yoke? It is, is it not to shear your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out? When you see the naked, that you cover them and not hide yourself from his own flesh, then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speak in wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose water do not fail. Let's pray. Father, I thank you to God for your words this morning which is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Father, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my God, my Redeemer, hallelujah, Jesus. Father, take full control of my lips this morning. Speak through my vocal cords, Heavenly Father. Let me be your oracle, O oh precious Lord. Let when the words of my mouth leave, dear God, let it rest, dear God, on the hearts of your people, dear God. Father, I thank you, dear God, for deliverance. I thank you, dear God, that shackles will be broken, that yokes will be lifted off your people, dear God. I thank you, dear God, for what you've already done and for what we're about to walk into. Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We say amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Our topic for this morning is connecting to God through fasting, and we're on part two. Hallelujah, Jesus. My subtitle today is The Acceptable Fast. And the question is, 
Is your fasting approved by God? Are you just eating to detox, diet, lose weight? Or are you fasting to connect to God? Hallelujah, Jesus. Are you fasting to get on a supernatural level with God? Because you can fast and all you can do is lose weight. Hallelujah, Jesus. We hear about fasting in the Old Testament. We hear about fasting in the New Testament. But a lot of people haven't really fasted. A lot of people haven't really even hear a lot of messages about fasting because messages on fasting are not really popular messages. Nobody sit down and be like, oh yeah, I'm going to go listen to that message on fasting. Hallelujah, Jesus. Many even think that our fasting is done away with, with animal sacrifices. But Jesus wanted his followers to fast. And he fasted as an example and said, follow me and do what I do. Hallelujah, Jesus. We are definitely not the church as usual. We're about building disciples, not building congregation. We're about building disciples. Each and every person should find himself growing in Christ. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you're not growing spiritually in Christ, then really and truly, you're just attending church. Hallelujah. We're supposed to be growing. Hallelujah, Jesus. What is fasting? Fasting is re refraining from eating food for spiritual reasons. To get to a deeper experience and a deeper encounter with God. There's a corporate fast which we're on right now. And there are personal fasts where God will call you to fast in your own private time, in your own secret time, where that is done for you and him. You can fast for one meal a day. You can fast one day. You can fast a week. You can fast two weeks. You can fast three weeks. You can fast up to 40 days, and it will be a healthy fast. Hallelujah, Jesus. And always remember that fasting is not a competition. You don't get into fasting and say, one person did 21 days, so I'm going to do 40. God is not looking for how long you can fast. He's looking to see whether or not you're humble while you're fasting. Whether or not you're repenting while you're fasting. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. As for us and this body of Christ, God is calling us this year to be more dedicated to our fast, to be more dedicated to our prayer, to be more dedicated about our reading of the scriptures, to stay focused, hallelujah, Jesus. Where right now, I'm doing a Bible in a year. So it's good to get as much as in the scriptures as you can while you're fasting. When you're fasting, it's about getting focused with God. Seeing what God is doing in your life personally. In your experience. That's what, that's what you're looking for with God. Hallelujah, Jesus. The enemy is not taking time off from your life. He's not attacking and saying, I'm not planning any more attacks. This is it. This is the last one, I promise. <laughs> the enemy is not attacking you and taking time off. It, it, it is a constant attack after attack. So you have to constantly strengthen yourself day after day. Hallelujah, Jesus. The enemy has no cease and desist order. Okay, he's going to be breaking for um, three weeks, take a break. Hallelujah, Jesus. The enemy won't attack in the next three weeks. That's it. We got three weeks break. The enemy don't have plans like that. It's a constant attack day after day. Only thing is, as a believer, as you grow in Christ, you get stronger and stronger. And what used to attack you last week and break you down, no longer attack you next week because you have already passed through that. You have grown stronger. You are a mighty warrior working and working and you're growing in battle. Hallelujah, Jesus. 
what I want you to know that as a believer, we grow spiritually. And it's a choice. We are choosing whether or not we remain the same and we remain defeated or we are growing and saying, I want to be a better person. I want to be a stronger believer. The same enemy that attacked you last week shouldn't be the same enemy who will attack you next month. The enemy that has attacked you last week should come again next month and say, oh, you're fortified. You're more stronger than you were last time. Now he has to go back and go get other friends because when he look at you, you are growing. The attacks that you get should increase. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm not going to tell you that they won't increase. They will increase, but you are getting stronger. And the enemy that attacked last week, hallelujah, Jesus, next month he will look at you and shake his head. Last week we looked at some of the benefits of fasting. When we are fasting, we get centered and focused. When we are fasting, we strengthen our connection with God. When we fast, we are looking for a fresh beginning and a new perspective to an old situation. When we fast, we draw closer to God. And he draws closer to us and we become connected. When we're connected to God, secrets are revealed. When we're connected to God, times and seasons are changed in our favor. When we're connected to God, we receive wisdom and knowledge. When we're created, when we're connected to God, He reveals what is in the dark places. Hallelujah, Jesus. When we're connected to God, we walk in victory and we walk in breakthrough. When we fast, detox, and cleansing of the temple, it's just the first part. It's just, it's just what, what, what you see on the outside. You got more energy. But that's not why we're fasting. When we're fasting, it's to humble ourselves before God. It's to repent for what we have done. It's to come to God and say, Father, I know that without you, I am nothing. You are my true source. You fight my battles. You do my deliverance. You provide for me. You give me peace. You give me knowledge. You give me understanding. Everything I ask for comes directly from you. When you fast, it brings you into a connection with God that you realize without him, you don't exist. Hallelujah, Jesus. Remember this, when you enter into a fast, You enter it with an expectation. You're going through a situation in life. And you say, God, I'm going to come to you with this situation. And I'm going to fast. And I'm going to do a week's fast. All I'm going to have is juice and tea for a week. And Father, I'm going to come to you with this problem. And I'm going to repent for everything that I've done that will be a blockage to that problem. And everything, dear God, that you have for me, I'm expecting it after this fast. And you surrender to God. And you call on the name of Jesus. And when you do that, you expect that once you do this thing, God is going to answer your prayer. If you have no expectation when you go into a fast, that's what you get. You get detox. If you have no expectation when you get into a fast, all you do is lose weight. Yes. When you get into a fast, when you come out, you're supposed to come out with a deeper relationship with God. You're supposed to come out with a stronger connection with God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. My subtitle is An Accepted fast. The acceptable fast. Hallelujah, Jesus. Are you in an acceptable fast? We're doing our 21-day fast right now. And I'm going to show you how to make sure that your fast is acceptable. We have a few more days left. And I want you to make those days count. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's look at the text. 
Isaiah 58, 2 to 3 says this. Yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways. As a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, and have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit your laborers. Here we see Israel failing to worship God in a way that they should. They wanted the blessings from God, but did not stay true to their worship. Their flesh was in it. They were in sackcloth and ashes going through the rituals. Yes. And you can go through the rituals as long as you want. If your heart is not yielded to God, all you're doing is detox and dieting. You, you have to be yielded to God. You have to be prostrated, laying on the floor, getting in, getting his presence, getting on your knees, calling out to him, yielding, repenting. Yes. That's what you do when you want your fast to be acceptable to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. They say, why have we fasted? And you have not seen. God is not attracted to us going through the motion. He's not attracted to to people go without food. Anybody can go without food. There are hunger strikes all over the world every day. People are going through hunger strikes and saying, I'm not going to eat until I get this. Man, you have kids going through hunger strike. I want this. I'm not going to eat that. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you don't see you don't see the brothers being like, oh yes, you're not going to eat it. But, but I thank you for not eating and I'm going to reward you for not eating. Now, nah. <laughs> you see at a table and you eat your food. Going without food, God is not looking at you like, yes, somebody's going without food. No, 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 no. Your heart has to be in it. When you fast, you're saying to God, I want you, I, I want, I want to see more of you, Father. I want to get into you. I want to get a closer relationship with you. You can fast, and your fast is not acceptable. You can fast for 40 days if you want to. If you are not getting closer to God, if you're not yielding to the Spirit of God, then you are not really fasting to God. You are just dieting. Hallelujah, Jesus. The children of Israel were going through rituals. They had no, they had no heart in it. The scripture said, why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? Hallelujah. They asking God, why have we done all this? And, and we have no we, we have to see no move of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Their action was saying one thing, but their heart was out of alignment with God. Hallelujah, Jesus. They wonder why God was not paying attention to them. Why God was not answering their prayers. The scripture said. In the day of the fast, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You find pleasure. That means you are doing things that was not acceptable to God. You find pleasure. You're doing whatever made you happy. You are living the same old life you were doing before you started fasting. When you start fasting, something has to change. Your, your lifestyle has to start to become more God-centered. You have to get into your word. You have to make your word count. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you used to read one chapter a day when you fast, you start reading two and three and four. You start growing. Hallelujah, because you want your mind to be renewed. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isaiah 55, 7 to 8 says this. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Hallelujah. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thought. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts nor your ways my ways, say the Lord. 
Are you in an acceptable fast? He said, let the wicked forsake his ways. Let an unrighteous man his thoughts. How do you change your thoughts while you're fasting? You get into the word. You renew your mind daily with scriptures. You get in, you get out what you put in. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. The scripture says, the word of God is written on your heart. But you have to study it. Study to show yourself approval to God. Yes. You have to get into the word. You have to read your word. So when, when you're in battle, hallelujah, Jesus, when you open your mouth, the sword of the spirit comes out. When you open your mouth, it's a scripture. Why? Because you study to show yourself approved. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can find yourself in a 21-day fast. You can find yourself in a 21-day fast, and you're doing it because you're obedient to your pastor. But it could just be practicing. You could fast for the 21 days and you haven't grown. If your fast is not acceptable to God, then it's just dieting. So many people will go through a 21 day fast this year. A lot of churches will start a 21 day fast at the beginning of the year. And in 21 days, Nothing will change. Because the scripture said, let the wicked forsake his ways. So you're fasting, but you're forsaking your ways. If the ways of God is not right, if the ways that you're doing is not of God, then it's not right. Hallelujah, Jesus. Sometimes you're fasting, and you find out that situations are getting worse. So you ask yourself, am I focused on God in this fast? If you're not focused on God while you're fasting, your situation will be getting worse and worse. Hallelujah, Jesus. Are you in the word? Are you worshiping? Are you praying? You can go through a fast and you don't feel like opening up your word. You don't feel like praying. The enemy will attack you. And the enemy will put you in a position where he won't want you to pray. You'll find it difficult to pray in a fast. The more, the, the more you draw closer to God, the more the struggle will be on. The enemy will come from all angles to deter you from your fast. He will put everything in your way to distract you so you don't get focused, you don't get serious, so you don't pray shackle-breaking prayers. The enemy intention is to deter you while you fast. Zechariah 7, 4 to 5 says this. That the word of the Lord of hosts come to me saying, Say to all the people of the land and to the priests, When you fast and mourn in the fifth and seventh months during those 70 years, did you really fast for me? For me? Hallelujah, Jesus. Did you fast for God when you're fasting? Or did you fast because you want to lose weight to fit your clothes? Did you fast for God? How do you know you're in an acceptable fast? If while you're fasting, your inside remains dirty, your thoughts are still dirty thoughts. You have not made an effort to change the way you think. Then your fast is not acceptable. If you're fasting and quarreling with others, your fast is not acceptable. If you're holding on to hurt and pain while you fast, your fasting is not acceptable. If you're fasting and living an adulterous life, your fast is not acceptable. If you're fasting and manipulating others, then your fast is not acceptable. If you're fasting and you're selfish, your fasting is not acceptable. 
If you're fasting and your words are negative and flow and, and are not flowing life-giving words out of your mouth, your fast is not acceptable. You can fast for 40 days and all you did was a dietary change. Hallelujah, Jesus. You have some people that go on a fast and all they think about is, oh, when I come off this fast, I'm going to get all I can eat. When I used to compete, that's what you say when you're, when you're going through competition. When, you, when you're going through competition dieting, your last, your last few weeks, you struggle. But you say, oh, I used to have this song where I say, five dollar foot long, because, <laughs> because at, the end of, at the end of my fast, at the end of my diet, I was thinking about, oh, I'm going to go to the subway, and I'm going to sit down there, and I'm going to eat as much five dollar foot long as I can. When you're going through a fast, your mind should not be focused on what you're going to eat after you come off the fast. Some people fast, and while they're fasting, they're thinking if they're fasting for, okay, I'm going to close my fast off at um, sundown. Oh, yeah, they're preparing that food. They start preparing the food from 12 o'clock. So their mind now is not on God anymore. They're starting to think about the food I'm going to eat when I get off this fast. And the, they keep watching the clock. Okay, six. Okay, the sun is still up. Oh, my God, sun is up late today. They can't wait to get off the fast so they can eat. That is not an acceptable fast to God. Your stomach is waiting for the food. Your mind is waiting for the food. Your mind is not on God anymore. Your mind has to be focused on God that even when it's time to break your fast, you say, oh my God, it's 8 o'clock. I did not even know. I was in the Word. I was meditating on scriptures. I did not know. If your mind is not God-centered while you fast, you are just dieting. You are on a dietary change. You are on a meal restriction. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can find yourself on a meal restriction. Hallelujah. Verse 4 and 5 of the text says this. Indeed you fast for strife and debate and to strife and to strike with the fists of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. It is a fast that I have chosen. A day for a man to afflict his soul. It is to bow down his head like a bulrush and to spread out sackcloth and ashes. Would you call this a fast? An acceptable day of the Lord? The children of Israel were being chastised by God and say, this is not a fast. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Isaiah was praying a word from God. And Isaiah was saying, this what you're doing is not a fast. You have to get serious about God when you fast. The NIV gives this translation said, your fasting ends in quarreling. And strife and striking each other with a wicked fist. People are fighting during their fast. Hallelujah, Jesus. You cannot fast as you do today, the scripture said, and expect your voice to be heard on high. You cannot be quarreling and strife when you're fasting because God is saying that is not acceptable. You're not seeking my face. When 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 you're going with our food, you have to be feeding yourself the word. This is the time when the enemy will tempt you to go into strife. Everything will affect you at that time. Why? Because the enemy said, I want you to break that fast. If you go through that fast for that whole day, God is going to break things off your life. And I don't want that to happen. So I'm going to bring people in your life to bother you. I'm going to bring people in your life to have strife with you, to have quarreling, so you can break that fast. Yes. So you can say, this fast is not working. Yes. That's why it, it, it will come to you in the middle of your prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. And you are going deep in your prayer. And then it comes to you, did I turn the stove off? Did I, did I turn the stove on? Man, I got to go check. Immediately, you're out of, you're out, you're out of it now. Your mind is no longer a God 
Because just when you're about to get a breakthrough, hallelujah, Jesus, the enemy will step in with a pitchfork. You have to get ready and say, oh, no, 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 no. He will, he will come in and, and, and it will take your mind off prayer. But that's when you press in. And that's when you say, no, I'm going to finish this prayer today. Hallelujah, Jesus. Matthew 4, verse 4 says this. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. It is not about your stomach when you're fasting, hallelujah, Jesus. It's not about waiting until I finish this fast. This is what I'm going to eat. I noticed that since I've been on this fast, everything I see is food. The enemy is, is, is trying to get at me, hallelujah, Jesus. Like, like he's trying to tell me, when you get off this fast, you know, you should go to that restaurant over there. That's a good restaurant. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, try, 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 try to get that food over there and I'm like okay God I'm a strong I'm, I'm a lean on you I'm leaning on you as the source that's going to take me through this fast hallelujah Jesus fasting is not about the outside it's not about appearance it's not about what it looks like that's why Jesus said, when you fast, he said, moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites with sad countenance telling everybody, oh, they all are fasting. You know, I'm just, I'm just like this today because I'm fasting. I'm like, well, how, come, how come you're like that today? You, you, you're just looking like that. No, 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 I'm just fasting, trying to get close to God, you know? No, he said, when you fast, he said, he said do not disfigure your faces. That they may appear to men to be fasting. He said, Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. When you start telling people, I'm fasting, well, you know, I'm fasting, you know, you have your reward. But when you fast, anoint your head, wash your face, so that you don't appear to men to be fasting, but to your father who is in a secret place, and your father who sees in secret will reward you openly. God is not into rituals. I know people who when they fast, they say, I won't even shower. You think God is going to be like, yeah, that one is not showering. Good. He's saying to himself, oh yeah, you're going to show up and the co-workers will smell you. And they, they're going to know you're fasting because you got to tell them. Oh, man, like, what's smelling like that? Oh, yeah, I'm fasting. Oh, it make no sense. God said, anoint yourself with oil. Wash your face. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm not going to finish my points today. That means we're going to have part three to this. Hallelujah. But one, part one, an acceptable fast will transform from the inside out. A time to fast is to humble yourself to God. Humble yourself before God. This is the reason you have to keep yourself in the word that you don't find yourself having competition with others. You have people who fast and they say, we're fasting for 21 days. After the 21 days, Somebody will say, you know, I'm going to go 28. God did not say, if God did not say to you, go 28, there's no need for you to go 28. But you, you will have people who will get into a competition spirit. Spirit of competition will come on and they'll be like, yeah, I'm going to go 28. I just finished 21 and I'm going to make this, I'm going to make this next seven count. You start to go into competition. This is when they say, you you fast to make your voice heard on high. So people can say, you know, John, you are good on this fast. Everybody has fasted 21 days, but John, you went 28. Good for you, John. You already got your reward. Everybody know that you are, you are better than everybody else. You can brag about this now. That is not God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're fasting should transform you from the inside out. Your fasting is supposed to humble you. 
He said, humble yourself with fasting. That means when you fast, it is not to say that you're going to walk around prideful. There should be no, you know, walking around arrogant. Oh, yeah, I'm just fasting, you know. Isaiah 1, 15 to 16 says this. When you spread out your hands, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourself and make yourself clean. Put away the evil you're doing from before my eyes cease to do evil. God chooses whether or not your fast is acceptable. He chooses whether or not you're, when you're fasting, he's even giving you notice. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can find yourself in a bragging right fast. You can find yourself in a hypocritical fast. When he said, wash yourself. Make yourself clean. Washing yourself in this particular way is to wash yourself with the word of God. To stand in living water. Let the living water pour all over you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your mindset should be, should be, should, should be altered. The scripture said, Philippians 4, 8 to 9 says this. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue in it, and there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learn and receive and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. You want your fast to be an acceptable fast to God. So you meditate on the things of God. You want to be transformed from the inside out. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your fasting should urge you to become more like Christ. As our flesh becomes subjected to our spirit, man, we should show the fruit of the spirit. Point two, an acceptable fast produces generosity. Isaiah 58, 6-7 says this, Is this not a fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burden, to let the oppressed go free? And that you break every yoke. This is a very important part of the scripture. Is it not to share your bread with the hungry? And that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. When you see the naked. That you clothe them. And not hide yourself from your own flesh. Hallelujah Jesus. What God is saying here. That an acceptable fast produces generosity. You're no longer all for yourself. But when you fast, you draw closer to God. You become holy and set apart. Yes. Our actions now should be Christ-like. So when you fast, you look for ways that you can help. You look for ways and say, oh, you know, I could do this. I see that. I can do that. That person need help over there. I'm going to go help that person. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, God will rest it on your heart. Yes. Pray when you fast and say, God, bring people to me who needs help. Yes. And if you send them to me, I will help them. And you know, God will test you. God will test you in your fast. Amen. He will test you to see if you're flowing with agape love. He will test you to see if this is just a diet or is it an acceptable fast. Hallelujah, Jesus. Matthew 25, 25 to 40 says this. For I was hungry and you gave me food. For I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you, 
Hallelujah, Jesus. When did we see you a stranger take you in? Or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly I say to you, Inasmuch as you do it to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you're fasting, find somebody who needs food and give them food. Somewhere in your fast, I don't think you have to do it every day, but somewhere in your fast, you know somebody at work who needs something. You know somebody who lived down the street who might need some food. When you're fasting for God and you want that fast to be an acceptable fast, you share your stuff with others. Yes. When you fast and you give, God blesses you so you have more to give. Proverbs 22 verse 9 says this He who has a generous eye will be blessed for he gives of his bread to the poor He says who has a generous eye will be blessed If you look for things to do if you look for people to bless when you're fasting you will be blessed Luke 3 11 says this He answered and said to them He who has two tunics let him give to one who has none, and he who has food, let him do likewise. You see somebody come right now, and you have two jackets. Pick them up, tell them, okay, I'm going to bring you, I'm going to bring you and get you a jacket. You're outside and you don't have a jacket. I'll take off my jacket and I'll give to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. You give somebody a jacket, it costs you $40 to get another one. It's, it, it's nothing, because God will give you, he will bless you so you can get another jacket. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you're fasting, you will be tested. Are you connected to God? Are you being led by the Spirit? Or are you still in the flesh? You're still in, if you're still in the carnal flesh, you will not behave the way that God wants you to behave. And it will not be an acceptable fast. Somebody said to me, when I have a problem, I fast. When, when I know somebody who have a problem, I fast. If your fasting is not God-centered, if while you are doing that fast, you are not connecting to God, it's just a dietary change. You can just simply say, I know a person on the street and they don't have enough to buy lunch. I see them at work every day. They can't buy lunch, but I'm a fast for them. All you're doing is stop eating it. All you're doing is take a break from lunch. All you're doing is say, for a few days I won't eat. It don't mean nothing. If at the same time you don't say, okay, now that I'm fasting, I'm going to take the money that I used to buy food. Yeah. And I'm going to give it to my neighbor who I know didn't have no food. So now that person can be able to buy food. When you bless somebody while you're fasting, your hands are not blessed. God will bless your hands to be able to get more. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to tell you this. Try this out. While you're fasting, find somebody to bless. And watch how that multiply in your life. This is not, this is, this is, this is not about saying, oh yeah, you got to give money to the church. Oh, no, no, no. What I'm saying to you is look for those who need help. Yes. Open your eyes when you walk and say, that person over there need help. I walk by that street every day going to work and I know I am going to see this person out there. And that person look hungry. What I'm going to do is next time I walk by that person, I'm going to pick up a donut and a cup of coffee and I'm going to drop it off for that person. <laughs> Hallelujah, Jesus. God will bless your hands. That little thought could be a test. What the scripture say? Don't forget. Hebrews 13 verse 2 says this. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by doing so, some have unwittingly entertained angels. Sometimes God will place angels there. Just to see if your heart is changed while you're fasting. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Point three, an acceptable fast reveals the supernatural. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love this part. 
an acceptable fast reveals the supernatural. You cannot fast and be God-centered while you fast without God bringing to you, hallelujah, Jesus, supernatural encounters. Supernatural encounter. When, you, when, when you're connected to God in your fast, when you're in an acceptable fast, he reveals to you the supernatural. He shows you, I am still God. Listen to this. 50, Isaiah 58, 8 to 9. Back to the text. The text says, Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily. And your righteousness shall go before you. Hallelujah, Jesus. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. When you're in an acceptable fast, you shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. This is what you want when you're fasting. You want to be able to cry out to God and he say, Hey, here I am. Hallelujah, Jesus. You got to be connected to God when you fast. If you are just fasting and you are not in your word, if you're not praying, if you're not worshiping, all you're doing is a dietary change. You want to connect to God, so when you call out, he say, Here I am. He said, the scripture said, if you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speak in wickedness, he said, you have to change if you want this to happen. You have to change the speaking wickedness if you want to call on me and I say, here I am. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said, then your light shall break forth like the morning and your healing will break forth speedily when you're connected to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're walking in the supernatural. When you're connected to God, hallelujah, supernatural healing and deliverance come in your presence. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you move from a, being a prisoner to the flesh and move by the Spirit, we will become aligned with God. When this begins, transformation happen. You begin to become a different person. Each and every time you fast, you are supposed to transform into a better person than who you were before you fasted. Amen. This is how you know your fast is acceptable. This is how you know God has done something in my life during my last fast. If you come out of a 21 day fast and you are the same salty person you were before you get in the fast, then you just dieted. You have not connected to God in 21 days. Because when you get connected to God, your life is not the same. You cannot have an encounter with God and things remain the same. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said, when you, you shall cry and he will say, here I am. When your fast is acceptable, God wait for you to call on him. He waits for, to, for you to call on him so he can do something for you to say, see, this is what I do when you are in an acceptable fast. I want to reach out to you. So when you fast and you're really serious about me, I'm going to do the supernatural in your life. I want to say to you, accept. Get, 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 in a, get in a spirit of expectation. Fast with a spirit of expectation. Say, God is going to do something supernatural. I might not see it right now, but when I finish this 21-day fast, I'm looking for a supernatural move. If you're fasting for seven days, when you're fasting, say, God, I'm pulling closer to you because I know you are going to do something supernatural after I finish with this seven days. My seven days is not going to be the same. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm going to rush into hallelujah, Jesus. Point number four. An acceptable fast brings repentance. Isaiah 59, 2 and 3 says this. But your iniquities have separated you from God. You want to fast in an acceptable fast. He said, and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. If your fast is not acceptable, he said, he will not hear. He said, for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with, with iniquity. 
Your lips have spoken lies and your tongue has muttered perversity. An acceptable fast should bring you to repentance. When your fasting really is acceptable, you look for the things that you want to confess. You want to repent to God. You don't want nothing hindering your supernatural move. Hallelujah, Jesus. When David committed adultery and he went into his fast, hallelujah, Jesus. Psalm 51 came out of him. Hallelujah, Jesus. All the dirty things begin to expose when you're in an acceptable fast. When you're seeking the face of God and you're getting into the presence of God, God will show you the dirty things about yourself. If you don't know how dirty you are, get into a fast. The moment you get into the fast and get into the presence of God, you see that you are filthy. He will show you that what you did was wrong. You need to repent for that that you have done. Hallelujah, Jesus. David, when David, when David comes to the adultery, he went into Psalm 51. Psalm 51 says this. 1 to 4, he says, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to your loving kindness. According to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He said, for I acknowledge my transgression. I acknowledge it. And my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done this evil in your sight. That you may be just when you speak and blameless when you judge. It goes down to seven and it says, purge me with his up. And I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. It comes down to 10 and says, Create in me a clean heart. And renew a steadfast spirit within me. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you're fasting, you want to go to God and say, Renew a clean heart. Renew a clean heart in me, O oh God. Remove every filthiness of my life, God. Everything that I've done with these hands that are not of you, dear God. Father, wash me. Yes. Cleanse me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Purge me. An acceptable fast brings breakthrough. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Ezra 8, 21 to 23. I'm going to show you how Ezra got his breakthrough through his fast. Then I proclaim a fast there at the river of Ava that we might humble ourselves before our God to seek him to seek from him the right way for us and our little ones and our possession. 23 So we fasted and entreat our God for this and he answered our prayer. When you fast and seek the face of God. This is not just dieting. This is not just eating right. That's not just changing away all your heat. But this is fasting and seeking the face of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. He answered our prayer. When you fast. And pour out your oil to God. When you repent. When you're walking in an acceptable fast you realize that God is in control. When you surrender the flesh, and flesh, flesh, hallelujah, Jesus, hallelujah, subject yourself to the spirit. When you lay your all on the altar, you know that right now God is in control. Hallelujah, Jesus. Joel 2, 12 to 13 says this, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm trying to make your fast acceptable. I'm trying to find, let you see that you can make your fast acceptable fast. Now therefore, says the Lord, turn to me with all your heart. With fasting and weeping and with mourning. So rend your heart and not your garments. Back in the day, they used to tear. In the days of the Bible, they used to tear their, their, their robe. Hallelujah. Fast and tear my robe. He said, I don't want you to tear your robe. I want to tear your heart. Hold on, my soul to I want you to, I want you, I want you to come to me with broken heart. I said, God, I'm sorry for what I did. Yes. I repent for 
what I did, God. What I did wasn't nice, and I know you didn't like that. So, Father, wash me. Yeah. Hallelujah. He said, return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness. And he relents from doing harm. When you are broken through fasting, you walk in breakthrough. Psalm 51, verse 17, David said, My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken spirit and a contrite heart God will not despise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's close with this. Hallelujah, Jesus. What does it mean to have a broken and contrite heart? Contrite heart means that you are in a place with God. That you know you are crushed, broken, and humbled. You know you are nothing without Christ. Isaiah 58, 10 to 11 says this. If you extend your soul to the hunger and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness. And your darkness shall be as noonday. Revelations. The Lord will guide you continually. And satisfy your soul in drought. And strengthen your bones. You shall be like a water garden. And like a spring of water. Whose water do not fail. When you're in an acceptable fast. Then your light shall dawn in the darkness. And your darkness shall be like noonday. That means whatever is hidden in the dark when you fast, you see it. If there's a stumbling block in your life when you fast, God will show you. You will be he will reveal that to you because now you will be shining as a dark as a as a light in the dark place. He will reveal to you the stumbling blocks in your life. What happens in secret will be revealed when you fast. When, when your fast is acceptable to God, your soul will be satisfied. When your fast is acceptable to God, your bones will be strengthened and you will walk in good health. If you are sick when you fast, you can get well if you are expecting for God to get well. If you are going into the fast as a sick person and you say, God, when I finish fasting, I'm expecting to be healed. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. If you are in an acceptable fast, he said, your bones will be strengthened. And you will be like a water garden. What happens when you water a garden? It grows. It becomes healthy. The soil begins to produce life. Hallelujah, Jesus. When you fast, and your fast is acceptable, you walk in breakthrough. Yokes are broken. You walk in deliverance. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. When your fast is acceptable, you walk in prosperity. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said, you shall be like a water garden and like a spring of water whose water do not fail. Hallelujah, Jesus. You will walk in prosperity. You become a lender and never a borrower. People come to you for help. When you are living an acceptable fasting life to God, people come to you for help. You don't have to go to people to be a borrower. You become a lender because he blesses your hands because he knows you are a giver. You are a generous person. So when you see people in help, you don't look and say, oh yeah, they need help. No, you God has sent you to be a help to them. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We want our fast to be acceptable. We have several days left. We have one more week left in this fast. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And we want that fast to mean something. We want this fast to be pleasing to God. We want to see great and mighty things when we fast. 
When we finish this fast, we want to see a mighty move of God. When we finish this fast, we don't just want to lose weight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We don't just want to see, oh yeah, I can fit in this clothes again. But when we finish this fast, we want to see God strengthening us and we are moving from levels to levels to levels. We're supposed to grow spiritually. As I say in the beginning, the enemies that attack you in the beginning of your fast should not attack you at the end of your fast. When you get serious with God, he fights your battles. Hallelujah, Jesus. So when those enemies come again the next time, they're supposed to know that you have angels fighting on your behalf. They're supposed to go back with that report and say he has reinforcements. We can't go and attack in the same way we attacked in the last time. We got to bring reinforcement because when we went there, we saw another person standing beside him. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, no more city. What I want to call about Santa. I want to tell you this. In the fire, it was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But in the fire, when they looked, the king said, there is another person walking in the fire with them. They're not in there by themselves. He said, there is another person, and it looked like the Son of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. What I'm telling you is, when you get into a life, Daniel and his brothers were known to be guys who lived in fasting. They said Daniel had a problem. He was always fasting and praying. And they told the king on him. And they said, King, when he's supposed to fast, he is not fasting. When he's supposed to bow down to you, he's not bowed down to you. He is praying to his God. They said, Throw him in the lion's den. When he went into the lion's den, the king showed up this morning, the next morning. And they said, My servant Daniel, are you still alive? He said, Yes, I am. My God kept me alive all night. When you are fasting and your fasting is acceptable to God, the enemy wants to touch you. But when he comes, he sees that you have backup. I want you to know that you can live a life where you have angels, ministering angels walking with you. When you live a fasting life, hallelujah, Jesus. That's why I'm telling you this. That in 2020, your life shouldn't be about food. You ate enough food in 2019. Amen. In 2020, your life should be a fasting life. Yes. Your life should be spent in prayer and fasting. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because when you fast, and your fast is acceptable to God, you walk in breakthrough. You walk in deliverance. Hallelujah. You walk in prosperity. The enemy want to touch you, but he can't because you got back up. Yes. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are washed. You are cleansed from impurities when you fast. When you're fasting, one of the byproduct, one of the bridge benefits of fasting is that God will detox you. You will be sick when you start, but when you finish your fast, you will be healed. Fresh living water will be pumping inside of you. Fresh living water. What I'm saying to you about fresh living water. Living water, the Holy Spirit will start bubbling it up against. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's next week's message. But it's bubbling up inside of you. And when the, next, when the fresh water is bubbling up inside of you, what happens is the thing that made you sick last time cannot make you sick again this time. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God wants us to walk into different things. New, supernatural in 2020. The thing that is already inside of you. God wants to break that thing. He wants to break that mold that is inside of you. Like a, like, like a fireman's hatchet. He wants you to pull that alarm. He wants you to break free. You ever see the sign that said break in a time of emergency? If it's an emergency, break here. Hallelujah, Jesus. Fasting will break in this emergency. It will bring breakthrough in your life. The thing that held you bondage when you fast, it is broken off your life. Hallelujah, Jesus. Break in time of emergency. It will be broken off your life. You cannot have the same demons affecting you at the beginning of your fast and at the end of your fast in seven days. That is an acceptable fast of God that you have the same 
demon walking with you, still pulling the breast of, no! Hold on my shoulder. That demon gotta be surrendered. He gotta go back and tell whoever sent him, that person got reinforcement. He started fasting. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. When you are a faster, when you are somebody who's in fasting or prayer, the enemy is supposed to come and say, he is fasting again. He's supposed to look and say, no, I can't touch him this time. He fasted. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let's pray, Father. I give you praise right now. I give you honor, dear God, and I look to you, dear God, as the altar and the finish of my life. You are my Alpha and my Omega, dear God, my beginning and my end. I am nothing without you, O Heavenly Father. You are my true source. You are my chief cornerstone. Hallelujah. I praise you for who you are, dear God. I thank you, dear God, for the blood of Calvary. I thank you for the cross. I thank you for redeeming my life, O precious Lord. I pray for each and every one right now. If they're a backslider, I'm praying for you right now. If you have never known Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I'm praying for you right now. Hallelujah, Jesus. It takes nothing to say, Father, I surrender to you. If you don't know him as Father, say, oh, precious creator of heaven and earth. Hallelujah, Jesus. I surrender my life to you. You can even say, if there be a God in heaven, I surrender my life to you. Hallelujah, Jesus. It's time. Don't let 2020 get over with before you say, I'm trying to give my life to God. Let it be now. Let it be today that you say, God, I will not live a day without you anymore. Let it be today that you say, Father, I will connect with you again. I'm going to take this to another level. I don't want to live a life like this anymore. I don't want to be a regular Christian, hallelujah, Jesus. But I want to be a true disciple of God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, I praise you right now. I honor you right now. I thank you, dear God, for what you have already done and for what is about to reveal, dear God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We give you praise right now. We give you honor and we give you glory in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And we say amen and amen.